All right. Let's hit the road with our second article, which is coming out of Cornell University and led by Professor Karam Afridi, and it's about wireless car charging. And I'd like to give a quick shout out to our friend Pierre Hurtabees. Uh He gave us a really polite shout out on Twitter asking us to talk about wireless car charging. We've also had a lot of people a lot of people. us in our Instagram comments about talk about wireless car charging. And I'll be honest, just up front, I'm kind of a skeptic of this stuff. Like, I understand the principles from Nikola Tesla. He's one of the first ones to talk about wireless power transfer. I understand those principles and the science behind it. But a lot of the modern applications today that go beyond charging your phone seem to be pseudoscience to me. Like, a lot of people on Instagram accounts with no real academic research backing it up. So, when I first read this, I gotta be honest, I was a little skeptical. But, um... Real shout out, actually, to Professor Afridi. He's got, like, he's an expert in this field. He spent his undergrad and his master's doing wireless power transfer for satellites in space. Oh, nice. So it was a little refreshing to read this article from him that's, like, really, really based on the fundamental physics and the science behind it rather than, like, pseudoscience. I so, wish he was the one commenting on our Instagram post. That would have Yeah, maybe he would have done a it lot a little easier. more politely. <laughs> okay, but let's dive into it. So... The reason why wireless power transfer isn't used for electric vehicles today is because there's a lot of health and safety aspects to it that, you know, make it really expensive, really make it pretty impractical to apply. Um, The way that magnetic fields work, that's how they would be powering this electric wireless power transfer with magnetic fields. It can heat up the rebar in concrete. Um, It can also harm passengers in their car and the material that they use to kind of guide this magnetic field and make sure that it's not leaking and doing all these bad things have to be ferrous and they're really heavy and really expensive. And just so, just for context, how is that mitigated in like smartphone applications where we see a lot of wireless charging happening now? They end up making it really bulky. So if you look at like a wireless charger for a cell phone, the induction coil in there that actually does the charging, it's about the size of a quarter, but they have all this extra you know, bulky infrastructure packaging around it to make sure that that magnetic field isn't leaking. So for us to be able to do this with cars, it required like a similar form factor, you know, for the size induction coil we want versus the amount of extra hardware that has to be around there to prevent the magnetic flux leakage. It it doesn't really make sense. So what Professor Afridi did is kind of go back to the basics, go back to what Nikola Tesla talked about, um, go back to what he studied, which is wireless power transfer in space, and how do they do that there? And they actually don't use magnetic fields like we use for charging our phones today. They actually use electric fields. And the reason there's such a big distinction between the two is because in a magnetic field, they flow in circular patterns from the minus to the plus uh, terminal of a magnet. But in an electric field, you can kind of do linear guided nature just from ne- just from positive to negative if you have two separate terminals so basically not all these looping arcs they don't need all this extra hardware to clean it up so is um, the idea to have like a positive or a negative in the ground and then a positive or a negative on the cars i i believe that's that's the intention okay. so it only goes from the ground to the cars there's not that much leakage you don't need all this extra hardware to protect that um but the issue here is, in in his test, it didn't leak as much flux, which is great, but the voltages were really, really low. So still not a very effective manner of wireless power transfer. One of the ways to mitigate that is to increase the rate at which it's charging. So it went up from 85 kilohertz, which is what most magnetic chargers are using today, to 13 and a half megahertz. So it's almost 200 times faster, but still there's not a meaningful amount of power being transferred. So it's a it's a good step and it's in the right direction and it makes sense to me, I think, in the principles because it's lighter, it's wireless. I mean, imagine being able to just, and this is the implementation he talks about, like making a wireless charging lane on the highway. So if you're driving your electric vehicle, you don't have to pull off and look for a charger. You can just get in this special lane that's got these pads on the ground that'll charge your car as you're driving. So the principle makes sense. I'm still a little skeptical to be, be just just to yeah. be honest. I, I'm actually in the same boat as you. Like, I feel like there's other low hanging fruit that could address this problem. And the example I'm going to use, I saw a video about it. I think last week, 
in Germany, they're rolling out these lanes for semi trucks where, um, I forgot what it is, but you know, you know, those like guide rails on top of roads yeah, for like street cars. Yeah. For street cars. They, they're retrofitting semi trucks to have something that can like unfold and connect to that. So as they're driving through that lane, they can get powered. And so the, the reason I think that makes more sense mainly comes down to the fact that, first of all, you're not going through the hassle of wireless charging to begin with. And second, the infrastructure is a lot easier to maintain. So like right now, if, if we're going to tie this wireless chain charging capability to the infrastructure that's in the U.S., that is super tough to me. Like our roads are way past due for maintenance. Our bridges are yeah. even more past due for maintenance. And it, if one of these systems go, goes wrong and this is what people are depending on to like charge their cars as they commute to work or they go on a trip that's just not cutting it and i can just see it getting yeah. more and more expensive to maintain i'm with you man it's a lot easier to maintain something on top of a telephone pole rather than buried in the ground and at the same time um you know to me if you look at the fundamental principles of it there's much higher efficiency and doing that type of power transfer with, you know, direct contact versus doing some type of wireless power transfer that's already got an efficiency knockdown factor that that's, you know, going to lose a lot of the power and heat. Yeah. But like one thing I will say, you know, this is obviously a solid step in the right direction. So it's a departure from using magnetic fields. Electric fields are with this research proving themselves to be a more reliable method of wireless charging something like an electric vehicle. And honestly, Rome wasn't built in a day. So with everything that we know right now about the physical world, this doesn't seem to be a great approach that should be like widespread. But for today, for today, the, the, the future could hold so many possibilities where this could be the ideal implementation for it. And I hope Professor Friedi proves me the cynic wrong because I would love to not Same. have to ever pull over to charge my car. Just unlimited range, drive forever. Same. I mean, it'd be great. This is one of those areas where I am very happy to be proven wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 